Families can be under a lot of stress these days. To maintain good health, some parents and kids are turning to the ancient technique of Reiki for good health. Reiki is an ancient holistic therapy developed by a Japanese doctor in the 19th century. It involves placing the hands on or near different parts of the body with the aim of healing the mind, spirit, and soul. Joining us today to talk about this method of relaxation is Reiki master Bonnie Hassan. With her is a Reiki student and parent, John Burton. Welcome, John and Bonnie. Hi, how are Good you? Morning. Good morning. So Bonnie, let's start with you. What exactly is Reiki? Reiki is a Japanese technique for stress reduction, relaxation, and healing. And uh, the premise behind it is, is that the practitioner is a channel for an energy that comes from a higher source. So whether you call that God or universal energy, um, it, we're working to be the channel for that energy. And it goes to the person that we're working on based on what the person needs. And it works on mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual levels to provide the client with whatever kind of healing they most need at the time that we're there. It seems like this is a lot of human touch. Is this really a physical treatment or is it really a mental treatment? It is actually a physical treatment. The, um, the premise is that the energy comes from the palms of our hands and goes into the person's body and it works with the life force energy that is in all of us. And so it can work mentally, but it is actually a physically touch-based system. Can anyone learn how to do it? Can children learn it? Can families actually, do it together? Actually, ki kids can learn how to do it. I've taught teenagers. I haven't taught young children, but I am aware that there are young children who have learned how to do it. And I do have parents that have asked if I would teach their young children because the kids themselves, when they see the parents doing it, go to put hands on the adults to say, Mommy, Mommy, I'm doing Reiki too. So we've given that some thought in my office, and I'm actually looking at doing that some point in the future. So should Reiki be mentioned uh, to your doctors? Is it something that you use in additional to traditional medicines? It is a complement too. I really say that it should not be an alternative treatment because um, this isn't something you do instead of, but doctors should be aware that this is happening because it can affect the medication levels that the children need as, um, as they're going through the treatment with Reiki. And I think it's really beneficial for the medical practitioner to know exactly what is happening with the child. They should be aware and informed of everything that the parents are doing so that they're knowledgeable on all levels. So, John, um, let's talk about your son, Jack, who's autistic. How have you used Reiki with him? Well, he participates in what is called a Reiki circle, where we uh, sit in the midst of uh, several Reiki practitioners, and uh, high levels of uh, Reiki energy are focused into the center of the circle. And uh, we learned uh, about it through presentation that Bonnie made to a board, which is the advisory board on uh, autism and related disorders. And uh, it had a very dramatic effect on him after the first couple of sessions. Can you tell us a little bit more? What have you noticed specifically that's changed since he's been participating? Well, the, the dramatic initial effect was uh, autistic spectrum children have a tendency when they're verbalizing to parrot or sort of do TV speak. If they're watching uh, programs on TV, they'll have a tendency to replay them to you verbally, verbatim. And that was about 80% of the content on my son's speaking at the time he started. And almost immediately, uh, the, that ratio reversed and he started uh, a more appropriate uh, discussions using age-appropriate vocabulary and the whole context of his uh, conversations changed uh, just overnight. So what advice would you have for families or for parents who are trying to introduce Reiki into their households? Well, I certainly, um, based on my experience, feel that it's something that um, may be beneficial to uh, the children. I know that Jack continues to look forward to going and really enjoys it every time he goes. He's been going for a couple of years. So it's, it's one of those things that uh, certainly can do no harm and um, it seems to me would be worthy of a try. So Bonnie, how often should someone practice Reiki? Is it every week? Is it once a year? Is it something that you can do for the rest of your life? Oh, you can do it for the rest of your life, absolutely. We say with Reiki that you can't OD on it and you can never get too much. So uh, even a little Reiki is better than none. I tell clients when they come, whether they're children or adults, that uh, 
that they should decide for themselves what's work, what works best for them and, and uh, when they feel they need it. I use Reiki on myself, which is one of the nice things about the technique. When you learn how to do it, then you can actually do it on yourself. And so when I, when I get up in the morning, I do Reiki on myself. I do it during the day when I'm stressed. It's something that I don't think I could live without at this point in time. Well, thanks to both of you. Thank, Thank you. you. We hope you found this edition of Healthy Life informative. To find out more on this story and other health-related topics, we invite you to go to our website at abcnews.com. Thanks for joining us today. From all of us at the Healthy Life production team, we wish you good health.